This is my commitment, if I'm elected the next U.S. president, to pardon Donald J. Trump for these offenses in this federal case. I have demanded that every other candidate in this race either sign this commitment to pardon on January 20th, 2025, or else to explain why they are not. And just to make sure all the candidates heard his demands loud and clear, Vivek Ramaswamy followed up with a written letter to each one, Republican and Democrat. The first to respond publicly, Asa Hutchinson. It shouldn't be a part of a political campaign. That's the most important thing. It's simply wrong to be discussing a pardon whenever we really have not gotten the facts out. Did he ever get that Walmart job? Joining me now, Vivek Ramaswamy, 2024 Republican presidential candidate. Vivek, great to see you tonight. Um, first, your response to Asa Hutchinson, who's polling at about 0.03 uh, percent, in what he said, that this shouldn't be part of the campaign. All the facts have not developed. Well, look, I think we know enough to know that the most damning facts are generally in an indictment. So assume that's the worst case for Trump. And let's stand for what we actually believe. If you believe those are politicized charges, then actually say so. And it should be an easy decision, Laura, to say on January 20th, 2025, we will issue a pardon. And I understand it would be more convenient for all of us, myself included, if Donald Trump were not in this race. But that's not how I want to win. The way that we actually should run elections in this country is that the people of the country get to decide who actually governs not some federal administrative police state. What I will say, Laura, though, is at least give credit to Chris Christie and Aza Hutchinson for being clear about where they stand, even though I strongly disagree with them. Both came back with responses in the negative. What I'm more frustrated by in our party, I think, is the absence of willingness to take a stand, which is actually what we heard from the vacillations amongst much of, much of the rest of the field. My view is I would rather speak truth at every step and forget about who wins the election. Let's speak truth rather than to play some political snakes and ladders. And I think that's something that our GOP and our movement needs to graduate from. Do you agree that there are a lot of establishment uh, Republican types who would frankly rather have a second term of Joe Biden than a populist conservative, Trump, yourself, DeSantis, actually be in office? I think so. And I think especially as it relates to some of the hot button issues such as how to engage in foreign policy. I've laid out a clear foreign policy vision that calls for breaking up the Russia-China alliance. But yes, that would involve trading off some sacrifices in Ukraine. These are beyond the pale. This is outside of the Overton window, even in the establishment of the Republican Party. And so I do think that there's something deeper going on in the country, Laura, where the real distinction is not even between Republicans and Democrats right now. It's between those who are unapologetically pro-American. I call it a more of a national, I call myself a nationalist, not in a way that's supposed to be inflammatory. By a nationalist, I mean, I stand for the ideals of this country and I will not apologize for them. And then an anti-nationalist, I think an anti-American streak in our country that wishes to apologize for a nation founded on our ideals. Mm. And I think both exist in both parties. That's the real divide yeah, that matters well, more than Republicans and Democrats. Well, Vivek, we're really enjoying uh, your campaign. We appreciate so much you joining us tonight. Come back soon.